Swamps occur all over the world in many different sizes and many different forms. But whether we look at a freshwater swamp in Botswana, a saltwater swamp in Florida, or a brackish swamp in Bangladesh, we'll see a lot of similar characteristics that define these unique geological areas. But what we don't often see in swamps is what you're about to see in these next videos. All right, so we just got this Burmese python. You can see we got him in the sun, so he's getting a little bit more energized up. From sinkholes to swamp things, panthers to pythons, and that's not even scratching the surface. 15 most terrifying things found in swamps. <laughs> Number 15. Swamp Alligator If you're exploring swamps in the southern United States, be careful. You might just come across one of these reptiles with a nasty reputation. American Alligators. They're only found in the United States. They can be found in the coastal wetlands of the U.S., southeast, as far north as North Carolina, and as far west as eastern Texas. Their range extends down to southern Florida and includes the Everglades. These reptiles are usually found in slow-moving freshwater rivers, but also inhabit swamps, marshes, and lakes. These alligators can grow to be more than 12 feet in length and weigh as much as 1,000 pounds. The animal's dark skin is armored with small, bony scales called scutes. A long, powerful tail helps propel the animal through water, as do webbed feet. Although American alligators can be hard to miss while basking on the shore, they can look eerily like logs when floating in the water. They're cold-blooded and depend on the natural world around them to provide warmth. To do this, they'll bask in the sun or dig holes in mud to trap heat. American alligators are carnivores. They eat fish, invertebrates, frogs, birds, and mammals. Their strong jaws are powerful enough to crack a turtle's shell. Now, let's get ready for today's open discussion. What they captured in a swamp shocked the whole world. What kind of swamp thing is this? Aren't human-like swamp creatures supposed to be green reptilians and covered in swamp slime? This looks like a Greek god emerging from its stone encasing, like some sort of sculpture come to life. But the truth is, swamps have been used as places where artists display their work. For example, sculptor Sophie put up an entire art exhibit in a swamp in France. Her swamp creatures are made of mud and seaweed, with the algae drying within the elements. The colors, textures, and skin of the creatures changes over time along with the organic landscape they inhabit. And other artists use materials they can find in swamps, like driftwood. They use dead wood they find to make all sorts of sculptures and furniture. Not only that, swamps are great places for photographers to take pictures and for filmmakers to use as backdrops. As for this mystery in an unknown swamp, there's a story here. What do you think it is? Comment below using the hashtag OpenDiscussion. Number 14. B-17 Flying Fortress Swamp Ghost The Swamp Ghost was the nickname given to a World War II B-17E bomber wreck that was located inland of Dyke Ackland Bay. The wreck rested approximately halfway along the commercial flight path and ditched in the swamp in Papua New Guinea during the Second World War after an attack on ships at Japanese-occupied New Britain on February 23, 1942. While flying, it was intercepted and eventually, having run out of fuel, had to force land in a remote swamp near the north coast of New Guinea. All of the crew survived the crash landing and arduous trek out. The aircraft was rediscovered in 1972, where it earned the nickname. In 1989, the Travis Air Force Base Heritage Center planned to recover it. The plane was salvaged in 2006 and moved to Lay Wharf, where it lay waiting for permission to be transferred to the United States. By February 2010, the wreck had been cleared for import to the United States. Then it was shown to a public gathering in Long Beach, California that included family members of the original crew. Plans were made to bring Swamp Ghost to the Air Museum in Arizona for restoration. The Swamp Ghost was received by the Pacific Aviation Museum in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii in 2013. Number 13. Red Swamp Crayfish Known variously as the Red Swamp Crayfish, Louisiana Crawfish, or Mud Bug, this species of crayfish is native to freshwater bodies of northern Mexico and the southern United States, but has also been introduced elsewhere, both in North America and other countries, where it's often an invasive pest. This species has the ability to tolerate brackish water, unusual for most crayfish. They're also recorded to have the ability to cross several miles of relatively dry ground and can burrow into the ground during extended dry periods. Red swamp crayfish are omnivorous, 
feeding on aquatic plants, snails, insects, fish, and amphibian eggs and young. They've been found to reduce amphibian populations through direct predation and competition for habitat. Populations have also led to declines in native crayfish species for the same reasons. Like other crayfish, they're considered an ecosystem engineer, capable of impacting ecosystem processes with the potential to affect all species in the area. Red swamp crayfish are commonly raised for human consumption and have been reportedly used as bait by anglers. Sometimes sold as a freshwater lobster, they're kept as aquarium pets due to their deep red color. Number 12. Swamp Sinkhole After it appeared, the Bayou Corn in Louisiana Sinkhole grew to 25 anchors, almost as big as 20 football fields, lazily biting off chunks of forest. It had confounded geologists who have struggled to explain this man-made scar in the earth. Much of Louisiana sits atop an ancient ocean, whose salty remains, extruded upward by the merciless pressures of countless tons of rock, have formed at least 127 colossal underground pillars. 700 feet beneath Bayou Corn, the salt dome stretches three miles long and one mile wide and plunges at least 30,000 feet to the old ocean floor. A bevy of companies have repeatedly punched into the dome, hollowing out 53 enormous caverns. But at some point, the well's western wall collapsed and the cavern began filling with mud and rock. The mud and rock above it dropped into the vacated space. The result was a yawning, bubbling sinkhole that destroyed trees, boats, and homes. The collapse also caused oil and methane gas from the underground to rise, appearing as visible bubbles on the surface of the water. The industrial catastrophe disrupted the geology of the local area to such an extent that eventually authorities had no choice but to issue an evacuation order for the area. Number 11. T-34 Tank Found in Swamp The Soviet Union's T-34 was one of the most revolutionary tanks employed during World War II. It featured frontal armor that was sloped at a steep 60 degrees, which allowed it to easily deflect enemy rounds. Unlike hulking tanks, the T-34 hugged the ground, offering a lower profile for its enemies to target. So, what's it doing in this swamp? The Russian-built T-34 tank was captured by the Germans and marked as their own. This one was either stuck during battle or ditched during a retreat in order for it not to fall back into the Russian enemy's hands or the tanks were prone to sinking because of their narrow tracks, and that's probably why it remained here in this muddy swamp for so long. It settled in 12 feet of water and six more feet of mud covered it. So during a two-week period, volunteers from a local diving club washed the silt from the tank. Then it was freed from its swampy resting place. Imagine how much horsepower is required to get these things out of a swamp after being buried for over half a century. You're looking at a bit of history being dragged out of the mud, the T-34 was then taken to a war museum, and they were even able to start the diesel engine after all this time. Number 10. Spotless Crake The spotless crake is a species of bird that's widely distributed species occurring in the Philippines, New Guinea, Australia, and New Zealand. But good luck finding one. This small, dark-colored rail, about half the size of a common blackbird, is very secretive and relatively infrequently seen. However, their furtive nature and apparent mobility means they could be present in areas of suitable habitat far from known populations. They seldom venture far from the cover of vegetation during daylight. On the mainland, the spotless crake is predominantly a bird of freshwater wetlands, dominated by dense emergent vegetation. This crake may forage on open mud near dense vegetation, but is quick to retreat when disturbed. The, these unique birds have a broad diet feeding on seeds, fruit, and leaves of aquatic plants, and a wide variety of invertebrates, including worms, snails, spiders, beetles, and other insects. They're a potential indicator of wetland health because they're dependent on the presence of high-quality and ecologically diverse habitats and rich food supplies. However, when Europeans arrived, spotless crake were abundant, but populations there have undergone dramatic declines. Number 9. Swamp Lantern also called skunk cabbage, swamp lantern is a plant found in swamps and wet woods, along streams, and in other wet areas of the Pacific Northwest of North America. The plant is called skunk cabbage because of the distinctive skunky odor that it emits when it blooms. The odor will permeate the area where the plant grows and can be detected even in old, dried specimens. The distinctive odor attracts its pollinators, scavenging flies and beetles. Spring blooms are a big part of the wonder of the Pacific Northwest coastal forests, 
For a short period, forests burst with color, but no other plant matches the swamp lantern. The leaves are something else. It takes only weeks before the bright yellow flower parts are overshadowed by enormous brilliant green leaves. No other yellow is as bold and bright. It may be that their habitat plays a role, for it's typically dark and dank. Few other lanterns glow that brightly. There's something otherworldly as they rise like luminous golden flames from the dark swamp mud. They have a lot of practice at this as they're members of one of the oldest flowering plant families and appeared about 245 million years ago. That means they beat the dinosaurs by about 15 million years. Number 8. Snapping Turtle Found in Swamp Believe it or not, these turtles are notoriously vicious and yet people still love to hunt them. The common snapping turtle is a species of large freshwater turtle, whose range extends from southeastern Canada, southwest to the edge of the Rocky Mountains, as far east as Nova Scotia, and as far south as Florida. The common snapping turtle is noted for its combative disposition when out of the water with its powerful beak-like jaws and highly mobile head and neck. In their environment, they are at the top of the food chain. However, when they encounter a species unfamiliar to them, such as humans, in rare instances, they'll become curious and survey the situation and even more rarely bump their nose on the leg of the person standing in the water. Although snapping turtles have fierce dispositions, when they're encountered in the water or a swimmer approaches, they'll slip quietly away from any disturbance or may seek shelter under mud or grass nearby. They consume both plant and animal matter and are important aquatic scavengers. They're active hunters that prey on anything they can swallow, including many invertebrates, fish, frogs, reptiles, including snakes and smaller turtles, unwary birds, and small mammals. Number 7. Swamp Eel The swamp eels are a family of freshwater eel-like fish of the tropics and subtropics. The Asian swamp eel is native to the regions in eastern and southern Asia, and also possibly indigenous to Australia, and it's been identified as an invasive species in the North American Everglades. They're not closely related to other living eels or snake-like marine and freshwater fish. Most species are able to breathe air and typically live in marshes, ponds, and damp places, sometimes burying themselves in the mud if the water source dries up. They have various adaptations to suit this lifestyle. They're long and slender. They lack pectoral and pelvic fins, and their fins are vestigial, making them limbless vertebrates. They lack scales and a swim bladder, and their gills open up on the throat. Oxygen can be absorbed through the lining of the mouth, which is rich in blood vessels and acts as a lung. Incredibly, most species of swamp eel are hermaphrodites, starting life as females and later changing to males, though some individuals start life as males and do not change sex. This feature allows them to replenish female populations when female densities are low, and in certain regions of the world, swamp eels are eaten as a delicacy. Number 6. Weapons Found Under the Swamp It's not only alligators and snapping turtles that can be found in some of the most dangerous swamps. People on rare occasions find actual weapons, everything from guns and knives to active bombs, the works. For example, there's a Russian archaeological team called Yuri Gagarin that publishes online videos of excavations of relics from the battlefields of the world wars. In several recent videos, they show they retrieve many really well-preserved firearms and other items from a swamp. Even after being in the swamp for about 75 years, these relics are in amazingly good condition, and they don't keep them. If they can, these swamp hunters track down the families the artifacts belong to so they can honor those who have fallen during these battles. Not only that, if they can't track down the soldiers' families, they'll turn them over to the local police. Sometimes, some samples are deactivated directly in the forest for subsequent transfer to museums. They don't sell them even though these weapons clearly would be very valuable. It's not a job for these swamp hunters, it's a labor of love. They do it for the sake of interest and heartfelt satisfaction in order to contribute to history. Number 5. The Amazonian Whale Forest and sea experts in Brazil are baffled. How could they not be? They found a 36-foot humpback whale dead in the middle of the Amazon forest. It was on an island in the Amazon River. According to reports, the 10-ton marine animal was discovered by locals on Marajo Island off Araruna Beach. In fact, they only found the whale because of the presence of scavenging birds of prey. The vultures were spotted circling above the carcass, which was found hidden in the bush some distance from the sea. While tens of thousands of humpback whales are estimated to live in the Atlantic Ocean off Brazil, 
nearly all of them have migrated south by this time of year, this summer in the southern hemisphere to feed near Antarctica. But this humpback was found some 4,000 miles from its expected feeding grounds. A team of experts from Sima visited the spot to investigate how the giant mammal landed in the middle of the dense rainforest. About 50 feet from the shore, they spotted the lifeless humpback, about 26 feet long, lodged in thick shrubs and brush. However, the mammal showed no signs of injury and biologists believe it was already dead when waves carried it to the forest area. But it still is a shocking sight. Number 4. Smallest Fish Found in Swamp these tiny fish, a distant cousin of the carp, is thin, transparent, and the size of a large mosquito when fully grown. Their miniature transparent bodies lack the typical feature characteristic of adult fish. These fish have a very rudimentary skull, which leaves the brain exposed. There are recently discovered genus of fish, the smallest known fish and the smallest known vertebrates in the world. Found living in highly acidic peat wetlands on the Indonesian island of Sumatra and in the Malaysian part of Borneo. Members of this genus are habitat specialists that only live in acidic water. Within peat swamp forests, they're usually found to inhabit deeper, cooler water close to the bottom half of the water columns. They also tend to inhabit shaded areas in which light is usually absent from their environment. Their small size helps them to survive droughts as they can live in small remaining puddles. However, their small ranges and specialized habitat make them extremely vulnerable to habitat loss such as drainage of peat swamps and fires, and some populations have already disappeared. It's been speculated that some other miniature fish from the habitat and region may already have become extinct, even before being scientifically described or discovered. Number 3. Florida Panther Found in Swamp In 1982, the Florida Panther was chosen as the Florida State Animal. It lives in pinelands, tropical hardwood hammocks, and mixed freshwater swamp forests in Florida. This panther is the only confirmed cougar population in the eastern United States and currently occupies 5% of its historic range. In the 1970s, an estimated 20 Florida panthers remained in the wild, but their numbers had increased to an estimated 230 by 2017, the last of what was once a population that spanned the southeastern United States. To genetically revive the Florida panther, eight female cougars from Texas were brought in and released. Why the Texas cougar? Historically, the ranges of these two subspecies overlapped and they're closely related. All the females were eventually removed and returned to Texas. Their offspring are considered Florida panthers though, and the population has grown now to the numbers we see today. These large cats often cover 20 miles in a day, hunting and checking their territorial boundaries. They prey primarily on white-tailed deer, but also eat wild hog, raccoon, armadillos, rabbits, and the occasional alligator and that's why they often get filmed around Florida swamps. These cats love to hunt there. Number 2. Burmese Pythons Found in Swamp Burmese pythons have been crawling amok in South Florida since at least the mid-1990s. The population's forerunners were probably released by pet owners, daunted by the prospect of maintaining a predator that can grow to 20 feet long and weigh 200 pounds. They're definitely not supposed to be here. No one knows exactly how many there are now, but estimates put their numbers in the thousands or tens of thousands. The pythons have been devouring local wildlife, indulging in mega meals like deer, bobcats, and alligators, as well as endangered species like the wood stork and the Key Largo wood rat. So far, the Burmese python invasion is restricted to Florida's southern tip, but scientists have been debating whether it could spread to more temperate parts of the United States. With thousands of Burmese pythons and other giant invasive snakes devastating wildlife in the Florida Everglades, the hottest question on many minds is how far north could they go? New research shows the snakes can withstand surprisingly cold temperatures, leaving open the possibility that their range could extend hundreds of miles northward. After all, the species' native range includes the foothills of the Himalayas, so it's no stranger to the cold. Number 1. Babarusa Known as the wild pig with a dental problem, Babarusas live in swamps in the rainforest of Indonesia and are found nowhere else in the world. The remarkable prehistoric appearance of these mammals is largely due to their prominent upwards and curving canine tusks of the males, which actually pierce the flesh in the snout. The word Babarusa means pig deer in the Malay language, as their wild growing tusks are reminiscent of deer antlers. Like many pigs, the male Babarusa's canine teeth will continue to grow throughout its entire life as long as there's a blood supply. But what are those tusks for? The real reason remains a mystery. 
An early hypothesis was that males use their tusks during fights over females, or perhaps the tusks serve as protection of the face and eyes from the slashing lower tusks during an altercation. It seems reasonable until a Bubarusa tussle is observed, instead of tangling up their tusks, they rise up on their hind legs and box each other with their front hooves. Unlike the tusks of elephants, Bubarusa tusks aren't built to withstand much pressure. They're fragile and not well suited for combat. They'll eat almost anything. These omnivorous pigs consume leaves, fruits, berries, nuts, mushrooms, bark, insects, fish, and small mammals, even smaller Bubarusas. So next time you're near a swamp, these videos hopefully will remind you that there's more than meets the eye in these unique ecosystems, and these bodies of water can be as terrific as they can be terrifying.